Let's see an examples for whole numbers. So the question which we have over here is we need to solve using the rearrangement concept. So the question which we have over here is 784 plus 127 plus 216. Let's see the solution how to rearrange this. So the solution is all about we have mentioned the term 784 plus 127 plus 216 as in the question. Once after that we need to add up the first two terms that is 784 plus 127. On adding these two we will be getting 911. We have the third term 216. So now we got to add up the 216 along with 911. When we add, we will be getting the answer of 1127. So this is how we will be solving these kinds of questions. Let's see another example. We have 25 into 8 into 125 into 4. Since this is a multiplication operation, we got to multiply the terms. As per the question, we have mentioned 25 into 8 into 125 into 4. Now, we got to multiply the terms that is 125 into 8. That is 125 into 8. So, this is the term which is going to be multiplied first followed by we will be multiplying 25 into 4. So, I have mentioned 25 into 4. On multiplying 125 into 8, we will be getting 1000. On multiplying 25 into 4, we will be getting 100. So, we will be getting an answer of 1 lakh. Now, let's move on to the next concept, integers. Integers are nothing to be considered as natural numbers. We can say 0 and negatives of the natural numbers which is called as integers. So you can find a representation of how the integers is all about. In general, integers are getting to be classified as whole numbers, natural numbers and negative integers. The set of integers is generally denoted by i or letter z. Every whole number is considered to be an integer. The examples which we have over here for the integer are minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and, and it goes on. You can also find how the integer example is depicted over here very clearly. Let's see an example for integers. We have the question, the sum of least and greatest of three consecutive integers is given as 60 in the question. So we got to find the values of three integers. Let's see the solution how to solve. As of first step, we need to assign the variables. Since the sum of least and, and the greatest of three consecutive integers is 60, as per the question, we need to find out the values of three integers, right? So we need to assign it off. Let's consider x which is the least integer. If x is the least integer, then the possibilities are like that. x plus 1 is considered as the middle integer, followed by x plus 2 as the greatest integer. So we have assigned the variables. Once after that, we got to translate the sentence. So this is a sentence which we have into an equation. As per the question, we knew that the sum of least and greatest of three consecutive integers is 60. We can rewrite it as x plus. Since we have middle integer and greatest integer, in the question we have least and greatest. So we need to mention x which is the least integer plus x plus 2 that is the greatest integer which is equals to 60.
Now on solving the equation, since we have x plus x, we can mention it as 2x which is in a combined form of terms and mentioning the 2 over here and we have 60 on the other side. By keeping and isolating the variable x on one side, we are taking over the other terms to the next side. So this 2 when it goes to the next side, it is getting to be minus 2. 60 minus 2 is 58. By keeping x over one side and taking this 2 to the other side, since it is in multiplication 2x, it is mentioned as divided by 2. When the 2x is getting to be separated as 2 as one term and x as other term, the 2 will be getting to be divided by 2. When 58 divided by 2, 58 will be getting to be cancelled in 2, which is 29. So we knew that the value of x is 29. As per the equation, we knew x plus x plus 2 equal to 60. On substituting the value of x that is 29 we can find out whether both the sides that is the LHS and RHS are equal or not by substituting the value 29 plus 29 plus 2 equal to 60 29 plus 29 plus 2 on adding up these three terms it's 60 so it's clearly identified and observed that the three consecutive numbers are 29 which we got as x value 29 the middle integer is on adding 1 that is we knew x as 29 on adding 1 it's 29 plus 1 that's 30 on adding x plus 2 that is 29 plus 2 it's 31 so these are the three consecutive numbers Now let's see about rational numbers. The numbers that can be written in the form of p divided by q where p and q are considered to be integers. And we need to understand that if q equal if q is not equal to 0 that is called as rational numbers. The collection of rational numbers is denoted by the letter q. And we also need to understand that between any two rational numbers, there generally exist an infinitely many rational numbers. We have an example for the rational number. 1.5 is an example for rational number. We can rewrite this 1.5 a decimal term into the fractional term, that is 3 divided by 2. Let's see some examples for rational numbers. The decimal number is considered to be a rational number when it terminates or ends up. So 1.5, 0 0.125, 0 0.75. These are some of the examples of decimal number which is going to be terminated. Apart from that, a decimal number is rational when it repeats with a pattern. Pattern is nothing but 1.333 and it goes on. If you see over here, we have 2.4555. Here 3 gets repeated, here 5 gets repeated. If these kinds of terms are found, then it is also considered to be rational numbers. Now let's move on to irrational numbers. Numbers which cannot be expressed in the form of P by Q that p and q are integers and also q not equals to 0. So it is a rational number and it is generally denoted by pi. Decimal expansion of pi is non-terminating and it's non-repeating. Examples are root 2, root 3, root 7 and it goes on. The value of pi is 22 divided by 7 where we can make it approximate as 
we'll see an example for irrational number root 6 the value of root 6 is 2.4494 and it goes on since 4.6 is not an irrational number the reason is 46 divided by 10 is 4.6 it's terminated and ends up so it's not coming in the category of irrational number root 2 that sorry it's root 12 root 12 is 3.4641 and goes on so it's an irrational number root 49 it's not an irrational number because root 49 equal to 7 it's terminated and ended up so this is how we can simply differentiate and identify irrational numbers Write two possible irrational numbers between 2 and 3. So this is one such example for irrational numbers. We got to consider the squares of 2 and 3 first. So square of 2 is 4 and square of 3 squared is 9. We knew that the values of root 5 and root 6 are root 5 as 2.236 and root 6 as 2.449. 2.236 and 2.449 if you see over here we can simply understand that root 5 and root 6 has a value which is lies between 2 and 3 therefore the two possible irrational numbers are root 5 and root 6 so this is one such an important question of the irrational number Hope you got an idea of irrational numbers and other things which we have discussed over here. Thank you for watching this from GTEC.